Um, so who you have on here uh, is um, uh, Jeff Lee Solis uh, and Lauren Scott uh, from Double Fine, and they will uh, take over. Um, Lauren is the senior systems designer, and Jeffrey is the uh, lead environmental artist. So you're all set and ready to go. Awesome, guys. Well, uh, in case you didn't know, my name is David Burdett. I'm the lead editor with Gaming Trend. Uh, I've been thoroughly enjoying my trip so far into Psychonauts 2 from what we've gotten to play in the preview build. Uh, you guys <laughs> have done uh, fantastic. I mean, when I when I say blast from the past, it's literally how it feels. Um, <laughs> So with that in mind, how does it feel to be so close to releasing this game? I mean, you're talking 16 years since the last mainline entry and then six since you guys announced this. So like, like how does that feel? I worked on the, the original one, so it, it's it's uh, it's a little surreal. Um, anytime you work on a project for multiple years like this, it it just becomes the norm. And so thinking about like in a sh short few months from now that we will not be touching it uh, any longer is, is a very, it's, it's, it's strange, <laughs> but I'm excited. I'm very excited to, to that people can finally play it because it's, it's one hell of a game. Yeah. It's like, what is life going to be like? Without this <laughs> project on our mind? And yeah, like I joined the studio three years ago. So our, our experiences are probably, like different, but also similar. I mean, we were just in a team meeting where we were reviewing the game uh, with the team, and it was like every, everyone just very excited and and to see the game coming together and just excited for people to play it. So <laughs> yeah, no, I, I feel like it's going to be kind of like when I've played Bioshock Infinite or Last of Us Two. I'm going to get to the end and be like, what do I do with my life now? I've I've <laughs> finally played this. <laughs> um. Obviously, uh, Microsoft with their acquisition that was that was a really big deal uh, for all of you. Uh, how has that empowered you in building Psychonauts too? I knew I read I read some things that literally wouldn't have been possible. Like I read something about like boss fights not being in the game and stuff like that that, that, that unfortunately happens in this business. How 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 has Microsoft being with Microsoft helped you to build this? Well, we're a very narrative focused company. And so uh, as we before we got acquired by Microsoft, we were focusing on uh, getting Tim's narrative for the game completely done. And uh, we there was just no way to do that if we were going to have bosses as well. Uh, and so once we got acquired, it allowed us to have that sort of uh, give us the bandwidth we needed to um, actually get boss fights into the game and, and polish it a bit more than it than it uh, than it would have been uh, and you know to be honest the game that it is now wouldn't have been possible without Microsoft which is fantastic and it allows us as a studio to do the thing we're best at which is be creative and make video games awesome ditto Lauren <laughs> yes ditto. Very comprehensive and, and perfect answer to that I feel the same way it's nice to not have to have the weight of all of that uh, other stuff to worry about on your mind understandable uh, I can say I played the I finished the lady luck post boss fight and it's awesome uh, I, I'm very uh, boss fights are a big deal to me <laughs> being done right and that one's awesome so you you all have done a fantastic job there. Um, obviously, we're talk we've talked about how the original. I mean, that's a long time ago. <laughs> yep, <laughs> that came out. Uh, do you think with Psychonauts two, have you changed and modernized enough to make the game relevant today? I mean, this this can be gameplay, this can be graphics, anything you want to talk about. Just that you've been able to make it work today because gaming's a lot different than it was sixteen years ago. <laughs> Go ahead, Lauren. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure you uh, have so on your side to say too. But um, yeah, so it, it with a, a sequel like this, especially with so many years uh, in between the two, you know, you're juggling like two separate uh, groups of people. You're you, on the one side, you have the super long time diehard fans who've been waiting over a decade, <laughs> yeah, for the <this> sequel, <laughs> and who also have uh, sort of the memories and the nostalgia of how they remember the game and they've sort of put it up on this pedestal and they've been waiting for it for so long. And then you have on the other side, 
players who have never seen the game before who, you know, open up Game Pass and, oh, there's this cool, weird looking game on Game Pass. I'm going to download this. I haven't played the original and, you know, just um, being sort of thrust into this new experience. So we're, we always have to like walk the line of, you know, uh, acknowledging and, uh, you know, uh, giving a nod to like the the past, uh, you know, fans, but then also having, like you said, like a modern uh, 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 take that also like, uh, you know, gives people a primer on what they should expect and what they need to know from the first game. So like to that end, one of the things that we did was add a uh, previously on animatic at the beginning of the game that sort of just gives you a quick rundown on the, you know, characters and the story thus far. And for the new players, obviously that's good. It, it introduces them to the characters that they need to know and gives them, you know, everything they need to know to be able to jump into the first level and understand what's going on pretty much. But then for, you know, the, the fans, uh, it's you know it's quick it's punchy it's funny and it does give a few nods to like things from uh, the past game so it's like it sort of satisfies uh, both both uh, groups and then going into the game itself um, you know we we bring back the most iconic powers from the first game and um, you know improve on them uh, give them a little bit of a twist for um, you know. Uh, nod to the past and then we have these new powers like mental connection time bubble and projection to you know um, add some new like freshness and uh, you know sort of cover areas of the you know Raz's suite of powers that uh, weren't there before and obviously the you know controls are a huge part of it like just the way that Raz feels just to move around just tactilely and and that's an interesting one because we we have gotten you know the feedback that wow this feels just like the first game like that I remember but there's really been a, a ton of work going down into the details of just you know how Raz moves how he jumps like his characteristic uh you know acrobatic uh jump and and it's 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 interesting that that is able to bridge that you know over a decade uh, gap and still feel like this this story is only three days later and the game is uh, also three days later, sure. <laughs> uh, so yeah, lo lots and lots done on the gameplay side and the narrative side. Yeah, I mean, it's always hard uh, sort of working within the the like rose colored glasses of looking back on something that was made so long ago because your memory of 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 playing the game is a lot different than like the reality of what it was uh so uh, i think uh, lauren and the rest of the, the the player team have done a fantastic job in in getting like bringing modernizing it but making it feel like the old game uh on the art side we've done a lot of uh, you know, Unreal 4 is a, it has a physically based rendering engine, so we had to take a lot of the painterly style and sort of adapt it to that physically based rendering. Um, in, in Substance, we use a lot of uh, Substance Painter uh, for a lot of our our, uh, our materials, and uh, we it, it took the the brushstroke styles of our uh, one of the original artists on the project, who's still at the studio, Nathan Stapley, uh, and incorporated that into a lot of the materials. So there's like a very subtle brushstroke quality, even though we're physically based rendering everything. So like rocks look like rocks, and glass looks like glass, and metal looks like metal. Uh, and so that is one of the one of the many ways we've tried to to modernize the the style and art of the game. Awesome. Well, you you can tell once again playing the game, uh, the the platforming is crisp and that's when i play a platformer it needs to be crisp <laughs> i need to know where i'm landing where i'm jumping all of that and it feels great um so the invincibility feature <laughs> there's obviously been a lot of silly hubbub around the reveal of it um i part of the preview was talking about just it's incredible what you have done to make this game inclusive to make sure everyone gets to play it. What what do you think about all of the silly narrative that's going on with, with this invincibility feature? I mean, you might not have even seen much of it. <laughs> I mean, uh, so the, the, the plans for our accessibility features, uh, all of them, uh, you know, were woven into the fabric of, of the plan for the game, like pretty much from the beginning. So, uh, you know, it, 
for it to like come come to the surface so prominently now it's like you never know what's going to be the thing but uh, <laughs> but <I'll wait. laughs> yeah but um i mean uh i think for me and, and i'm sure like lots of people it's it's, it's like we just want as many people to be able to play the game and have fun with the game as possible to just widen that pool of people as much as possible. And like, you know, if the alternative for someone playing the game and, you know, uh, for one, you know, key accessibility feature like invincibility or, you know, uh, uh, color blindness compensation, which we also have, if it's a difference between having that key accessibility feature and not being able to play the game at all, like we obviously want people to play the game and, you know, see all the amazing art and uh, experience the narrative and all of the other slew of gameplay, uh, <laughs> you know, features that are in there. Uh, and, you know, and if they, you know, have a different way of enjoying one feature of the game, then like, I, I'm glad that they're playing it, and I'm glad they're having fun. So that's all. Yeah. I don't have much to add to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Said it fantastically. Awesome. No, it's it's silly how people get attached to one little thing and and let that. I mean, just let people play the game. People just need to play the game. Um, on that note, at the very opening screen, one of the things that I noticed there's a blurb that talks about the game tackling mental health. Um, and there's a like I, I played through I, obviously I got through the Lady Lucktopus and all that kind of stuff. It's awesome the way this narrative takes on the what sh, uh, Hollis is going through in her head. Um, the game's always done a great job, but just just reliving kind of the Psychonauts stuff. This is just really impactful. Um, how did you go about addressing? these mental issues like how how did it go about building the narrative did we did you bring in psychiatrists or talk to go to like seminars about it like how, how did you how were you able to learn to build i guess would be the word for it uh, well, I mean, no, no one at Double Fine is a, is a mental health professional, um, and so we looked outside of the studio. Microsoft uh, got us in contact with a group called Take This, which, uh, which helped uh, us with that. But also, we just try to approach all of these topics with as much empathy and care as we possibly can. Um, because yeah, once again, we're not. <laughs> we all we can do is bring our own experiences into this game, and uh, beyond that, uh, we need professionals to help us. So, <laughs> yeah, rely on the people who are smarter than us in this area <laughs> to help us. But yeah, ditto to all that. <laughs> I feel like now somebody's gonna grab a headline and go, "Double Fine needs professional help." <laughs> I mean, that's not. I yeah, you're false. not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need some professional help myself, but no, it's a. I really, I've enjoyed the. I've dealt with mental health issues myself, and you wouldn't think a video game would be able to tackle these kind of things, and something like Hellblade and now Psychonauts Two have both been able to tackle this in a real way that actually speaks to people rather than just is just go glossing over what goes on. So yeah. thank you all for, for what you're doing in that. <laughs> um, last but not least, my last question. Uh, so nobody knows the future, but do we want to continue the series after Psychonauts? I mean, he's just an intern from what I've seen so far. So there's plenty of a way to go. <laughs> Uh, I mean, that that is more of a question for Tim. He, he, <laughs> but uh, Tim has a lot of ideas. And so, uh, you know, who knows what's what's to come next? I think we're right now we're just focusing on on getting this one out to the door for everyone to play. And then, uh, um, yeah, I don't know. We'll 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 come to what's next after this. <laughs> There's yeah, always irons think... in the fire. but Yeah. If any, if there's anyone who knows the future, it's him. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. I, I knew I wasn't gonna get much. I had to at least ask. I gotta, I gotta start prepping myself. Hopefully not for another sixteen year wait. <laughs> but we'll put it on the Xbox Mind Drive. That <laughs> <laughs> the real cloud. <laughs> yeah. All right, Jeffrey, Lauren, 
it's been absolutely incredible to get to talk to you today about this. I'm, I can't wait to fully realize what you have built. Uh, it, it, once again, as someone who played this way back when it came out, it is so it, like actually getting my hands on it. It feels like I'm back there again in 2005 playing Psychonauts again. And thank you so much for that. Awesome. Thank you. I can't wait for people to play it. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for playing and your kind words. And yeah, same. <laughs> awesome. All right. Awesome. I think that wraps it up, guys. Thanks so much, Dave. Appreciate it. Hey, thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a great rest of the day, and we'll talk soon. Yeah. Right. See you guys. You Bye. as well.